There are a ton of game engines out there to pick from, but what's the best one for you as an indie developer? That's what we're setting out to find out in this video. In your bog standard YouTuber tier list, but it's not just any tier list. I don't like that standard, you know, C, B, A, S tier list. It doesn't work for me. Like what, what's the difference between a B and an A? It doesn't make any sense. So instead we're gonna be doing things a little bit differently. I'm gonna be rating things either in a niche tier, a hobbyist tier, or sort of an overall good indie tier. That way, when you see the games on the tier list, you know instantly which one's gonna be for you. And if there's any game engine that I'm missing, you can probably associate it immediately with where it belongs on the list. And just real quick, this is an unscripted video. My previous videos have all been scripted, not this one. So if you like how this is flowing a little bit differently than the other videos, or if you don't like it, let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, if you find yourself enjoying the video, please consider liking it and subscribing if you aren't already. Trust me, they mean a ton to me and they do a lot more than what you think they do. Anyways, onto the tier list, and we're starting with the niche tier. This is a very genre specific tier. These game engines can only really do one thing well. You might be able to hack something extra into them, but it really is just that one thing. For example, the Doom engine is something I would include here. A lot of hobbyists love working in the Doom engine, but it predominantly only does first person shooters. Sure, you'll have that occasional weird one like that wine sipping game, but more often than not, you're making a shooter. So Doom Engine, first one on this tier list. Another one on this tier list, very popular is RPG Maker. If all you wanna do is make a JRPG, RPG Maker does that for you in spades. My only concern with RPG Maker is that every game kind of looks the same. You have to really go out of your way to make a unique game in it, but you can do that, and there are certainly examples of that. And the final engine that I could think of to put in the niche tier list is Renpai. It's really only good for visual novels and telling stories. So if that's what you want to do, there you go. But these are the only three engines I have in this tier list. If I went through everything out there, it would be really long. And I think you get the point. If you find a game engine that is only really good at one specific thing, it's a niche tier engine. Doesn't mean it's bad to use. It just means it can really only do one thing. And if you're wanting to be a long time indie game developer, you're gonna be very limited in what you can do if you decide to sit down with that engine. But if you maybe decide to spend just a little bit of time to learn that engine and make one specific game in it, it'll serve its purpose very nicely for you. The next tier is the hobbyist tier. This is the tier where you could 100% make a game end to end in any one of these game engines, but they're more geared towards indie developers in the sense that you're making smaller scale projects. A great example of that is GB Studio and Pico 8. I mentioned them before, but they're all in one game development solutions. You can make all of the art, music, scripting, everything in these, but because they are designed to make small games, they're very limited in what they can do from a power perspective. But if that's all you wanna make, they're perfectly great solutions and they're really good introductory solutions to begin with. So if all you wanna do is tinker in game development and you don't know if you wanna go full on into one of the bigger engines, they're great starters. There is absolutely nothing wrong with them. Likewise, you have Construct and Love 2D. These are limited in that they can only do a few things really well. Construct is making HTML5 games and Love 2D is making 2D games, but you can certainly make some really big games in them. And I guess in a similar vein, Game Maker also fits this, so it's also in this tier as a hobbyist engine, but it has a lot more power and it was used in some really big games. So it's not quite as limiting as these other engines, but it is still relatively in this hobbyist tier. And finally, for the hobbyist tier, you could also just make your own engine. It's really fun from a technical perspective, and if you ever decide to pick up a Playdate, it is the only thing you can really do outside of using their web-based builder that's similar to Pico 8 and GB Studio. But outside of tinkering, there's only one other reason why you'd want to make your own engine, and that's if traditional engines cannot do what you need to do. For example, Noida has every pixel be simulated in the game for interactivity. You can't really do that in a modern engine. All right, and now we have the indie tier of game engines. These are ones that can do basically everything and you can conceivably spend your entire development career in one of these three engines. And for those three engines, we have Godot, Unreal, and Unity. And just for the sake of getting it out of the way, let's start with Unity. Now, it's no secret that Unity and me don't see eye to eye nowadays. I used it from 2009 until earlier this year, but the number of controversies have 100% steered me away from it as of late. 
And trust me, if you go look up Unity controversy, there's like a dozen over the past five years. The big ones are that Unity purchased an adware company and integrated it into the software, which nobody liked. And then there was the whole runtime fee fiasco from 2023, which caused a lot of people to ditch the engine for Godot. And then more recently, there was the whole Unity Cloud thing where every new project was gonna have to sit in the Unity Cloud. And if you didn't like that, oh well, too bad. <laughs> Which thankfully the backlash from the developers, like with the runtime fee, forced Unity to sort of backpedal on that a little bit. And they've since not made it a requirement, but they still tried. And so that really got me thinking, what's Unity's end game here? Well, we know they IPO'd back in around 2019, and that means they no longer answered to the developers and the internal stakeholders. It's anyone that owns a stock or a share of the company that they are answering to. And traditionally, when you IPO, you're chasing ever increasing profits year after year. And because Unity doesn't make their own game like Unreal does with Fortnite, they can't just print their own money. They have to squeeze it out of the developers. And we are seeing that time and time again with the decisions that they're making. It doesn't make Unity a bad engine. It is quite the contrary, a very, very good engine to work in. But I have no faith in the current administration of Unity to put the developers first. They have no financial reason to do so. And as a result, there's a hidden tier on this tier list, which is the I can't recommend in good consciousness, otherwise known as avoid list of which unity sits solely upon now if you use unity this is not me trying to attack you or say you should stop using unity trust me i get it i was on unity for a very long time and even sat through the whole runtime thing because i thought it stuff would get better. I made the choice to switch, and I'm not saying that you have to either. The point of me mentioning this here is if you're watching this video and you don't have a game engine that you want to build in just yet, and you're trying to take ideas and field where, which one you should, you know, use, I don't want a new developer to go in here and use Unity at this point in time unless they want to make mobile games. If you want to make mobile games, it's basically your only option currently, so use it. But if you want to make actual indie games, I think you're going to be better served by the other two engines that I'm going to mention here in a second. They each do different things better than one another, but at the very least, the developer is not trying to squeeze the life out of the developers for additional income. I just cannot in good conscience recommend Unity to a new developer. But again, if you're using it already, there's no reason to switch unless you're interested, in which case we got two more recommendations to go through. And for the first one of these is Unreal. Now, Unreal is an interesting one. I think 95 or even 99% of indie developers do not need to use Unreal, but the number of people actually using it is way higher than that. So why do I think this? Well, Unreal was designed for AAA studios to make full-blown AAA games in. It can do lighter projects, sure, but that's not what it's designed for. So there's a lot of workflow in it that's not with the indie developer in mind. They've gotten better about this more recently, but that's its legacy. That's what it's good at. So the only people I would really recommend using Unreal to are anyone that wants to move into the AAA field professionally. So if you're a college student and you want to pick an engine and you eventually want to go work at an Activision or an EA or someone of that nature, yeah, use Unreal. It makes no sense for you not to. But if you're only ever going to be working on a project by yourself, I think the next engine's better. I'm sorry. It can do most of what Unreal needs to do, with the exception being of high fidelity 3D graphics. And chances are, if you're an indie developer, you're not doing that. There's some rare exceptions to this, but most of the time, if you're solo developing a game, you're not doing the highest fidelity games out there. Unreal is overkill. And for that, my number one recommendation, but also in the same tier, and it's not better than Unreal in any way, but it is getting better, and that is Godot. Godot is a completely open source project. It is by developers for developers. So that issue with Unity where the stakeholders take precedence over the developers, that will never ever happen with Godot. And if it somehow ever did, the community would fork it and there'd be a new version of Godot called like Godot Community or something. And you'd be able to use that for free without any licensing issues. It does the vast majority of what indie developers want for 3D and 2D graphics. And chances are, if it doesn't do it yet, it's in the pipeline for it to be done or there's a community made asset that'll do it for you. And truthfully, the amount of growth that Godot has seen in the past two years, ever since the whole runtime fee fiasco, 
it's been crazy, crazy good. And a large part of that is because a lot of developers have been throwing money at the Godot fund in order to more rapidly improve the development of Godot. And we even see AAA studios starting to give a look at Godot. For instance, in Battlefield 6, or whatever the newest Battlefield is, the level editor for the community is 100% in Godot. I don't know how they pulled that off, but it's really cool and it's helping to push it into a more mainstream form. This to me kind of feels like Blender did back around 2011 or 12, where a lot of indie developers were starting to pick up on it, but a lot of people still use Cinema 4D or 3DS Max. But nowadays, most indie developers and even a lot of studios are using Blender. And I think Godot is going to be there in about five to 10 years. So if you're looking to pick an engine for the long term, it really makes the most sense to switch to it right now in order to reap the benefits down the road. But again, there is no best engine. Use whatever you want to use. The whole reason for this list is to give my opinion about the current state of engines. Anything on this list is going to be usable. If you want to make visual novels, you got RenPy. RPGs, RPG Maker. If you want to make something a bit more niche for a, a Game Boy or something like that, you've got engines for that. And if you want to make you know, your livelihood and live inside of a one single game engine, I think you've got three really good options. Just because Unity is currently experiencing some turmoil behind the scenes doesn't make it a bad engine. Right now, I just can't in good conscience recommend it. And I think if you settle on any one of these engines, so long as you understand their limitations and what they're good at, you're not going to have a bad time. You're going to be able to succeed one way or another. But there are some engines that are better at certain tasks than others. And I hope that this list kind of laid that out for you. And yeah, if you have your own thoughts or you want to recommend your own engine, please leave it in the comments below. Or better yet, join our Discord and discuss it there with me personally. Catch you next time.